All right, good afternoon, everybody. This is the uh, last of our study group meetings. We are going to go through a Q&A session today. Um, and then I do wanna stop toward the end. We'll, pro we'll turn off the recording and just kind of get some final thoughts uh, from you. I think we, we also wanted to talk a little bit about uh, those that are uh, new to the admin world and, and searching for uh, positions and and being able to share some insight there as well. We might do that before we turn off the recording, but um, then we'll do a, we'll, this will be our final session. So um, should be exciting. I'm going to stop share uh, this particular slide and let's go into the uh, exam question. So and let me get my face out of the way. On my website, you've got um, the ability to, to do this. This is a this is a beta exam. <laughs> I don't know how well it's going to work out, so we might run into some issues. Um, but I do have uh, both the admin certification and the platform app builder. I've got uh, that set up. You're welcome to go out and run through this on your own. I know that we're not going to get through all the questions today. Um, but I'm going to set it up for 20 questions. We'll see how, if we can make it through 20. And looks like I might have to make my screen a little bit smaller. Is it big enough for you guys to read? Are you able to read it okay? I'm good. Okay. Yes. All right. And just for fun, this is actually built on Flow, sitting on a Salesforce community. So, um, if you're curious how, how I did this, I'd be happy to show you the back end at some point. Uh, we can do that. So let me get this large enough to get everything on the page. And if I need to, I can zoom in. You still Are you still able to see it okay? Yep. Yes. Uh, all right. Um, it looks like it gave me 18 questions instead of 20. So we will go with that. Um, and what I'd like to do is maybe just go through and I'll randomly select you guys and have you answer them uh, and we'll talk through them if, uh, if we get an answer that, that you're not sure of or a question you're not so sure of. The human resource department has assigned, it, um, has assigned, is assigned to the sales app. They see many tabs that aren't relevant to them. They, and they've asked if you could fix this. As a Salesforce admin, you determine the best approach to, best approach is to build a custom app for them. Which of the following is not an option when building a Lightning app? Choose one. So Scott, do you wanna take that first one? I'll have to look at this for a sec. Yep, um, go ahead. This is a stab in the dark, so I'm going to go with E. E, adding custom branding on an app. All right, so that is, hopefully it comes up. If not, we'll switch things around a bit. Um, it is actually ah, adding subtabs to the standard navigation. So when you're, when you're creating an app, you've got the ability to choose whether or not it's going to be a console app or I, and I don't know if they use the terms, I, I capitalized it as standard, so it must be a standard app or console app. And um, a standard app doesn't have the concept of sub tabs. If you, if you are creating a console, then you would mm -hmm. see sub tabs. And so um, there are links in there to um, allow you to go in and, and actually see uh, some help, Salesforce help documentation on that topic as well. And then if you don't like the question or if it's confusing, you can always dispute it and I'll review any of those that might come through. Uh, Taylor, let's have you take this one. Which of the following is not or cannot be created using the schema builder? Did you mean Tyler or Taylor? Tyler, Tyler okay. sorry. I don't, I'm never gonna get that name right. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just shouldn't even, you, you're just going to have to accept it, I guess. <laughs> I'm never going to get it right. <laughs> um, is it E? Online is not created. 
look up objects, master detail, geo fields, custom objects, and formula fields. So which one, what's your final answer? Uh, I'll go with C. C? Let's give it a shot. Very good, nicely done. Nicely done, all right, yeah, geo, geolocation fields cannot be done in the schema builder. Lori will give you the next one. Sales team would like to see the contacts email displayed in the highlights panel of the page. I probably should say of the lightning record page. As an admin, what adjustment should be, would you make to add that field? I've got all kinds of spelling items there, so I'm just gonna check that so I can fix it later. B, adjust the compact page layout. Yeah, that is correct. Very good. I don't know if that worked, so I'm gonna try that again. All right. Um, Meredith, I think I've got you next on my list. The big box store has enabled social, which of the following is true as it relates to security and privacy. I'm just reading. Yep, take your time. I think it's A. Which of the following is true? You do not need a social media account. All right, let's see. It is D. Information you see about a person or a company depends on your, how you're connected to them. So if, um, if when I log into my social, say Twitter, I will, mm -hmm. I will see only the information that I have visibility to is if, if I was actually within Twitter looking at it. Um, okay. So yeah, it is, it is completely dependent on your level of access to them. That would have, A would have been my next yes on the list too. If I had, that would have been my second, second option. Yeah. Yeah, good. Um, Tanner, we've got you next and then Scott will rotate back around to you. The app dev environment includes multiple projects being built by admins and developers. Each project is built and unit tested in separate sandboxes. What would be the recommended best practice prior to deployment or deploying changes in production or changes to production? What would be the recommended best practice prior to deploying, deploying changes to production? This is a life cycle type question here, or app dev. I think I would go with C. Deploy changes from each sandbox to a combined test to validate prior to deploying. That sure sounds like a good answer. All right, very good, very good. Any questions on that one from anybody? Feel free to jump in if, uh, if you do, and we can talk through it. All right, Scott, when creating a custom relationship, when creating custom relationship fields, only one object supports a hierarchical relationship. Which one is that? B case. B case, all right. The answer on this one is going to be user. The user object is the only one that supports that hierarchical. Do you remember what hierarchical relationships are? Right, I was thinking of roles there. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's uh, the relationship between the t two people. Right. Uh, give you that hierarchical one. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Um, gosh, never now. Oh, every time I'm going to say your name, I'm going to question myself. Tyler. Yeah. There you go. All right. All right. <laughs> um, you have this one. Universal Containers or UC has a custom object called Credit Application. The object has an auto number field used to store the application number. UC recently acquired a company named Box Inc. Box Inc. has a credit app record as well that's identical. As the admin for UC, you've been tasked to upload 12,000 credit applications. Box Inc.'s application number must be retained and loaded into the UC's credit application number field. How would you accomplish this? So first, is the question clear? This one was a little bit hard to try to make sure I, it made sense. Yeah. I think I have to read it again. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I think I'm following along. Okay. They, they acquired a company that has nearly the same uh, number for their application record. Yeah. And so they want to keep their application records yet still. Yeah. Um, not have conflicts. Okay. Um, and it's going into this auto number field. That's the kind of that keyword up there. Right. Yeah. So this kind of goes to some of those questions of um, where we talked about if you change the field type, um, what's the impact of that? So I'm kind of giving the, giving the answer away a little bit there, but uh, that's kind of the intent behind this particular question. So I'm guessing it's D. <laughs> Convert the application to a text. Yeah, I kind of I kind of gave it away to you. Sorry. Um, change it back to the auto number after with a new starting number. So that auto number field, you can change it to a text field that that will allow you to add additional records where you're controlling the value that's going into that field. Once your once your data is uploaded, you can then switch it back to an auto number and change that starting number or sometimes you might think of it as a seed number. What's the, what's the next number that's going to get assigned when a record goes into the object? Does that make sense? Any questions on that particular one? Oh, sorry. I should uh, select it and move on, huh? <laughs> All right. The other thing there too is what you, you notice that I mentioned 12,000. And um, I think one of my answers said something, yeah, here, import wizard. So if you see something like that where you've got more than how many records for import wizard? Somebody tell me. 50,000. 50,000, yep, okay. I think that's correct. And so watch for things like that, because if this number was bigger, then you could have immediately uh, ignored or crossed DE off of the list. So things like that are kind of helpful. Um, again, it's not, I had somebody um, uh, message me this week. Uh, we were kind of chatting back and forth a little bit about Salesforce's questions and, and the thought of uh, that the questions are sometimes trick, tricky. And um, I tell you, they're not necess they're not intended to be tricky, but they're, you do have to watch your wor each word on those questions because one word can sway the answer one way or the other. And so um, always, always read, the, read very, very carefully. Watch for, for things like that um, uh, so that you're, you're able to eliminate certain um, options on those questions. So let's... Move to the next one. I forgot where is it, Lori? Are you up next? Yeah, I think so. When creating fields, which of the following are not available custom field types? There's one in this list. A address. Yeah. Hopefully that's not going to be the case much longer. Um, I know there's a lot of a lot of people asking to have that one as an as an available option. That would be awesome. 
uh, Meredith, which of the following are true about button links and actions in the Salesforce mobile app? There's two correct answers here. Um, I think it's B and D. Okay, Wait, um, well, okay, which ones are true? Um, yeah, which ones are true? I know B and uh, I'm going to say A and B. A, A and D? B, A, A and B. A and B. Okay. And the correct answer would have been B and C. Delete button is not available on your mobile. And you are able to have different actions um, than the desktop. If if when you're on the on the page layout, if you remember, there's a there's some actions for call and email that are uniquely different between the mobile environment and your uh, desktop environment. So those are oh right yeah okay. yeah I remember okay. that now the call for sure yeah call for sure and I, I'm pretty sure email is another one that is unique. I, I might be wrong on that, but I think I think email is also. But definitely for sure call is is unique to the mobile. Very good, Tanner. You've been given a set of requirements. One of the requirements states radio buttons must be used for data entry. As an admin, what declarative tool can you use to meet this request? Uh, C, build a yeah. screen flow. Yeah, that is correct. Um, that is the only um, way that we can do it declaratively is through a screen flow. You can do it through a lightning web component, but again, that takes code. Good job. Back to Scott. Human resources wants to implement um, a Salesforce solution to allow and track employee complaints. Confidentiality is critical. Any employee can file a complaint, but they can only see their own records. Assigned people in HR are allowed to see all records. Assuming the complaint object is marked as private and the organization-wide defaults, what else would be required to prevent people in the people higher than them in the role hierarchy from seeing records submitted below them. D in the org wide defaults uncheck grant access using hierarchies. Yeah. Very good. I think that's the correct one. Yep. Nice nicely done. Tyler which of the following development tasks cannot be completed declaratively? Um, D or no, uh, <laughs> Want to call, need to call a friend? <laughs> um, so think about the, when a record is with, saved, what, what is it that you're, you're not able to do? Right. Oh, wait, B? B. B. Yeah. B. Yeah. Yeah. B is the right answer there. Um, you can't ask for, you can't bring up another screen to, to ask additional information during that save process. That is correct. So the thing that confused me about that one is yeah. that it was after it's saved. Cause couldn't you in a flow, uh, like have a screen that then upon hitting a button saves a record or creates a record and then 
display another screen with more information to that's get, true that, that would be true if you're working within a flow you're absolutely right yeah that would work the other there are other um, code based ways you could pull it off too because you could have a lightning component on the page that's listening for certain thing at, um, events to occur and when that event occurs the lightning component could take over it's going it and maybe the wording on the question needs to be adjusted a little bit because in it, if I were to say during the save process then the lightning component piece wouldn't work either because Salesforce will not allow you to interrupt the save process. So that transaction will save. Um, they're not going to let you stop that. They're going to they're going to make it save, and then you, then based off of the data, you could in, in essence kick off another process through code. Um, or if you're in a lightning flow, absolutely you could do the same thing there. Yeah, good 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 stuff, Lori. An admin for ac accurate designs wants to automatically set the value of a field that is required by a validation rule. Can this be accomplished? And if so, how? I'm going to go with E, but I'm not real confident in that. <laughs> okay. All right. I had to go through these ones too and think, hmm, I wonder. <laughs> um, all right. So um, process builder runs toward the very end um, of the process. So it's, um, it would be, yes, you could uh, using the before trigger um or before save record flow would be the way that you could do that now um wants to set the value of a field that is required by a validation rule i think i'm questioning myself on that one um now hold on. give me just a second i want to look something up here real fast because i may have that wrong Um, so this is the order of execution that uh, it's a diagram that I put together. So you've got system validation that's occurring. That's that's things such as a re uh, when your um, when your object or the field on your object is marked as required. That's that's some of those types of things that are happening inside that system validation. Um, then your record. Yeah, your, your little system of execution. Um, that's actually what's showing as your camera. Are you able to switch it? Oh, sorry. Oh, actually, yes. I was able to switch it. No. Yes, 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 I can. It's probably switching if I talk, isn't it? Um, but let me sh let me share it differently. Sorry about that. Better. So system validation, record triggered flows, before trigger flows, system and user validation. So this is the validation rules that you're, that we, we create. Your duplicate rules fire, and then you kind of get that middle process of, of the record is partial. It, it actually is being written to the database at this point, because at this point you do get an ID number um, for the record that's, that's being created but your transaction isn't technically complete yet. Uh, that you've got your after triggers, your assignment rules, workflow, process builder, and flows. So this, is, this would have ran after the user piece uh, as far as this particular question is concerned. Escalation rules will run and then record triggered flows run um, at the very end. And then your record is finally committed. So that's, that's that order of execution. I can share that with you guys as well so you have it. Um, it's kind of a helpful little tool. And back to the quiz, if I can find it. Uh, 
All right. Any other questions on that one? All right. And is it Meredith? I think you're up. Yes. We'll create a validation rule. Which of the following fields are required? Error message. Okay. There's two. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh. Um, <laughs> I, I read, just, I, read I was carefully. Just that maybe, that's, maybe that's the reason that's silent. <laughs> um, error condition formula. Yeah, very good. Okay. Tanner, you've got this one. What are the types of calculations available when creating a roll up summary field? for a currency field. Uh, a, C, D. <clears throat> a, C, and D. Yup, that is correct. The average always throws me because I always want to stop and think, I can do an average, can't I? And you can on reports. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That throws me off too. <laughs> yeah, that one, that's the one that gets me too. Um, so. All right, back to Scott. When a child object is related to its parent using a master detail relationship, what is the implication to sharing roles? Um, let me, that is kind of poorly worded, I think. Um, so, for the child, I think I think what I was intending to ask on that child object, what is the um, what would be the impact from a sharing standpoint? I see. Okay, uh, C controlled by parent. Yeah. Yeah, I should mark that one too. Didn't they use like the term inherited? Like, what um, does it inherit? I don't know if that gives it away, but. It, it, I don't think that the documentation refers to it that way, but, um, but yeah, that is a, that is certainly the concept. It's inherited by its, from its parent. You do inherit, um, I think they might use that term when you're looking at the, the, share button so if you go back into classic and you click the share button on, on a um, on a record and that share button will show you who has access to the the record that you're looking at I think they might use that term there I'm not totally sure uh, but yeah conceptually it's it's inheriting it absolutely Taylor Oh, you were so close, Terry. You had it two in a row. <laughs> I know. I know. I knew I was going to mess it up. <laughs> it, 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 it's going to stay that way. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm convinced. All right. Which action is available in workflow but not process builder? The A? A. A is correct. And what is an outbound message? Can you tell me that? I was going to ask actually what outbound messages was too, um, but I knew okay. that the other four were possible. So I yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely good. No, that's a great way to great way to do it. A process of elimination. Somebody tell us what is an outbound message. All right, so an outbound message. <laughs> Terry, tell us what an outbound message is. Um, it is a um, SOAP message, so S-O-A-P. It's, um, it's, a, it's a system message that's going to send from Salesforce to another computer system, so like a, um, another web service that's based off of SOAP. Um, so it's, a, it's a, basically an integration between two computer systems. 
That is not an option in Process Builder. Probably never will be in Process Builder, but it might be might be via flow at some point. But um, it's kind of most people when they're done integrations today, we don't we don't often use SOAP um, as the method to transport information. Most of the time, we're using like a REST API. So it's hard to say whether or not how long that will have a life. It sure was an easy way though for an admin to, to do an integration because it's, it's point and click to set it up. There's zero code. Um, so it, it was, it, it is a nice option for, um, for admins. All right, our last question, Lori. Salesforce dashboards have a setting called view dashboards as of the choices below, which are the valid options. There's three of them. What is E, the dashboard viewer? Sorry, I'm having a hard time seeing the. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah. Um, yeah, that's Okay, there's your question. Okay, got that? Yep. All right, and then there's your, oops, I covered it up with my picture, hang on. So you can view the dashboard as me, a system admin, another person, my team, or the dashboard viewer. And there's, um, there's three correct answers. It's definitely me and my team. Okay. <clears throat> I'm trying to remember. I just did this the other day. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I know when I, when I do questions like this, I'm always trying to, in my head, visualize that page and think, okay, now what was it? What did I see there? You want to call a friend to get some help? We can open it up. <laughs> well, I'm thinking maybe, yeah, I can phone a friend. <laughs> All right, guys, <laughs> help her out. What, what, uh, what do you think? E. E, okay. That's what I was gonna go with Tanner, so. Yeah. That's the dynamic dashboard. Yep, that's your dynamic dashboard, that's right. Are we good with those answers? What's the um, one where you put it as a person's name, where you enter their name? Yeah, another person. That's I, was, I was thinking C and not D. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say that too. Okay. Ace yeah, Ventura. That, yeah. Any other thoughts? What's the difference between me and the dashboard viewer? Because if you're viewing it, it's you. Or am I reading that wrong? So if, if you have created the dashboard and you've set it up to be the dashboard viewer, it's, it's whoever is looking at the dashboard. So if I run the dashboard, it's running it as me as the viewer. If Scott runs that same dashboard, it runs from his view. Oh, got it. Okay. So that, that, that's a very, very nice feature on our dashboards. That saves you from having to create a lot of dashboards. Uh, so we good with those answers? Let me get back to where I can see my button. And those are the correct ones. So very well done, very nicely done. And we'll cross my fingers, see if it failed or not. All right, good. So um, here's here's how it how we did. So we've got each of the topics listed here in an overall. Um, with So we've got 13 of the 18 correct. Our weighted score there was 74.6. So we did pass. Very good. So you're all certified. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, the, the idea, <laughs> the idea yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the idea here is to try to give you a, a sense of, of where your strengths are and um, as it relates to each of the topics. And so, um, that that's really what we're trying to do here. So it's, we did pretty good on the data modeling side. We only we missed one of, of the four questions. We nailed all of the reports with 100%. User interface we had we we're at 50%. Um, we um, need to work on social. There it looks like we only were hit with one question. 
Um, but again, we just, we only had 18. So um, business logic, we were at 80%. So we did really, really well there. 100% on the fundamentals, 100% on security. Scott, I think you got all those security questions. Um, if I remember right, those landed all on you. Um, so nicely right. done. Um, <laughs> and then on the mobile side, um, we we missed the one question that was asked there. So um, hopefully that's helpful. If you do want to go out and play around with it, you certainly can. Um, it Just as a reminder, it is... Um, when you're on the site, it is, you, I don't have it as the one that's gonna come up here yet. It's the practice exam link over here. Um, and that will get you to that if you wanna play around with it. Um, and, and certainly if there's questions that don't make sense, like some of, some of them that we found, feel free to dispute it and I'll, I can kind of clean those up. But again, you don't have to use it. It's just an, another exam out there out of a ton of them that are available. So um, you're, you're certainly welcome to use whatever, whatever works for you. So um, any questions um, on any of the topics that we've, we've had that are still a little bit fuzzy for you that you wanna work through? Everybody feel pretty good. How, how are you feeling about where you're at and being ready for the, for an exam? I feel, uh, really good. I, I feel, I feel pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I have yeah. mine scheduled for Friday. Awesome. Awesome. Very, very yeah. good. All right. And who, who was that? I Tanner. Didn't... Tanner. Awesome. Very good, Tanner. You will have to let us know. So that'd be awesome. That'd be very good. I yeah, scheduled you, mine for like the 31st, I think, okay. on Monday. Okay. But I have, I gotta, I have some work to do, I think. <laughs> but I just, I know I just need to take it because this has been really helpful and this will keep everything fresh, you yeah. know, if I do it pretty soon. Right, right. One thing too to keep in mind that um, all of your questions on the exam, they're not, what, what I've what we just went through is just um, more testing kind of your your knowledge. That's it. The questions on the exam are all going. All of them. I I believe I'm correct in saying this. All of them will be scenario based. They're gonna they're gonna give you a paragraph to read, and then they're gonna ask you the question. I I I recommend to people as a best practice read the question first. It will be separated, so you'll see the, the scenario at the top. You'll have your question below it um, in kind of like a second paragraph. Read the question, then go back and read the scenario portion, because then as you're reading the scenario, you know exactly what you're looking for, and that is extremely helpful. It saves you a lot of time from having to go back and reread the scenario. Um, so just throwing that out there as a, as a good technique. Um, when you're I'll taking, do that. Yeah. I hadn't heard of that, so I will try that. Yeah, it's very. I I personally find that much much helpful, but partially because I'm kind of a slow reader, and and I I it takes me a little bit to to kind of process what it is that we're asking, and so it for me it's a big time saver uh, to to take that approach. So uh, hopefully that helps you guys as well. Lori, how are you feeling? I'm feeling okay. I did have to, I originally had mine scheduled for last weekend, but I had to um, reschedule it due to some other obligations. So okay. I have it rescheduled for the end of the month. End of the month. All right. Yeah. Very good. Very good. You feeling pretty good? Um, I think I need to take some more practice tests. Okay. I All definitely right. Definitely have a little more studying to do. Okay. All right. Very good. I'm looking at your name, Taylor, Tyler, and I um, <laughs> Every time I look at it, I'm trying to think, which way is it? Um, hey, how, <laughs> how are you feeling? Yeah, I feel good. Um, okay, do you have it scheduled? Uh, I don't. I was actually just uh, trying to look for a uh, time to okay. schedule it. Um, yeah, it was definitely helpful to get a better understanding for what to expect. Okay, good, good. And Scott, how, how are you doing with it? 
Yeah, I think this uh, course is really helpful to build the foundation. And I want to take a few practice tests uh, mm -hmm. first, um, focus on force or whatever to, yep. and then the official trailhead stuff just to really dig into the terminology of what they use to yeah. not get tripped up on the little um, things they use there. But once yeah. I get that sharpened up, I think I'll be ready. Good. Um, I, I forget which, um, I should have kept a link to it. A question was posted, I think in the, it's probably in the admin um, uh, group out on um, the community site. And a, a person was asking uh, for, specifically on the app builder, she was looking for um, uh, practice exams. And so I posted out there about the one that I was, oh no, she was looking for the admin. Um, and I, so I mentioned mine and there were a ton of other people who also mentioned different resources. Some of those, I'll, I'll find that and I'll email that to you guys so that you have it because it's a great study tool as well. So, uh, several of the sites that were mentioned also have App Builder as one of the um, options. So if you're looking for um, practice exams, that's, that might be helpful for you guys as well. So I'll find that and shoot that out in a email. Anything else, um, other questions that you would have that you'd like to run through? If we have some time, um, I still don't really grasp the parent account scenario, how it works, why you would use it. On the so, account object? The okay. uh, or the person accounts, I'm sorry, not parent oh, person accounts. accounts. Person accounts, yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, I've got one question that it didn't come up in this one, this cycle, but it may come up is <laughs> a question specifically on that. So um, person accounts, think of those as an option when you're doing a, uh, let's say you're a retail store and you want to, um, you you want to have Salesforce be a record of your customers, but your customers are all individuals, they're not businesses. And, and so person accounts allows you to come in, from a user perspective, it, it kind of combines the account and the contact object into one. So as, as, as you make changes to the contact object, they actually show up on the account object and the contact object, while it still sits there and it holds data, it you can't get to it <laughs> on a person record. If, the, if I were to look up, um, if I did a search in Salesforce for Tanner, it's and, and I see your name and I select it, it, I could potentially, in fact, I would see both, a, I'd see two Tanner records, one as a contact, one as an account. If I click on, on the contact one, it's gonna take me to the account, just like the account one would. So uh, the, the structure on a person account is, is still account and contact. It just duplicates the data. So one thing when you're, if, if you were to be asked a question on person account from a data um, storage perspective, understand that a person account is going to duplicate your data because it, it is going to live on the account. It's also going to live on the contact object. Uh, so it, yeah, keep that in mind as, cause I, I could very easily see that being a question. Mm -hmm. um, does that help? Does that? Yeah. That, make that kind of context okay. makes more sense. Yeah. It, it's, it's always used in the scenario where you're dealing with a, uh, person primarily within your org as you, as the people you're dealing with. So consumers, mm -hmm. um, in, in a person account, you can still have a business con contact there as well. So you, it, you're going to have, um, record types. So if I were to, if I selected a new account, it's going to ask me if I want it to be a person account or, um, you know, whatever you want to name your business accounts, so which is a uh, person account or a business account. So record type controls it. So you can still have your traditional account contact relationship, but if you select the record type that's a person account, then it's then it's all going to live on the um, account object. 
from the page layout view. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's a little, okay. the, the data model is a little bit confusing. I, it, they're not going to, I don't think, drill into that too much, but they may, they might question the concept of it duplicating the data because you, you will hear that as the primary negative of, of the person account model. Gotcha. It used to be people hated it and avoided it at all cost. Um, I'm of the opinion now that it, it shouldn't be something that you're afraid to turn on if it makes sense. I would suggest turning it on in a developer environment first, just to make sure. But um, <laughs> you don't want to turn it on in production and, and then find out, oh crap, that was a mistake because you cannot turn it off. Um, so yeah, be careful with it, but I wouldn't be afraid to use it today. It's it, They've really done a lot of work to make person accounts kind of um, in, uh, in in line with a traditional account and contact model. There's, there are some nuances that you have to be aware of, but it's come a long, long ways. Can Good. you convert uh, something to a person account that already exists? Uh, changing the record type. Just changing the record type, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you might, you know, I've never, actually you're, you're that, that my my initial response there might not work it may not let you because i i'm I, as i think about that i could see that if if it if you did you might could lose some data because of it your, your <clears throat> multiple contact. contacts per account yeah so i i i'm going to take that answer back because and just say i'm not sure okay um <laughs> that works <laughs> yeah yeah i i'm kind of talking myself out of the quick answer you can certainly switch from you know if, if you've got multiple account record types you can certainly switch between those account record types um at will um i'm not positive on person to um on account to a person uh, record type good question any other questions that you're kind of struggling through or all right and then I think we wanted to talk briefly Scott I think you had mentioned this to me the the idea of how do you break into the this admin role when <clears throat> when you've not been an admin before um, you're you're trying to break into the this Salesforce world What's uh, what's worked for you guys? How how did you guys get into the Salesforce world? Well, for me, it was several years ago, so I don't know if that model would work. But it was the accidental admin uh, where we mm -hmm. did implementation. Uh, my husband just recently got his admin certification and switched okay. from mechanical engineering to Salesforce. And uh, for him, what worked? So he went into an admin role cold, had not had any uh, experience oh, yeah. besides Trailhead and, you know, getting a certification. So his tactic was to really target uh, volunteer opportunities. He didn't have a lot of luck there. Um, he connected with um, a few contracting or companies that did uh, contract gigs here in mm -hmm. Kansas City. Yeah. And that's how he ended up getting his first role. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He actually, his first Salesforce interview he got the job. He landed it. So wow, very good, very good. Yeah. but that connection happened through the user group. So oh, she cool. reached the, uh -huh. one of the contractor or companies reached out to him, and then the user group, Kansas City user group meeting, just happened to be the next day, and she was there. And my husband met her in person, and then from there, oh, it nice. just rolled into an interview, and he got a, a job. So that would be my recommendation. You know, leverage the leverage the community and take advantage of the Ohana. You know, there is a lot of goodwill out there. And if you're looking yeah. for a role, you know, reach out and all of us will be more than happy to help. Okay, cool. Yeah. I am. Uh, once we start meeting again in person, whenever that will be, I've been <laughs> at a few of them in Kansas city and um, uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, but yeah, I'll definitely follow up with that. And Scott, are you in Kansas city? I can't remember. Yeah. I'm in Kansas yeah. city. Okay, because we could connect and I can give you the name of the company my husband went through. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, no problem. 
Yeah, awesome. Very good. Thank you for that. All right, I'm going to stop recording. Thank you guys very much. I'm, I do want to want you to hang on for just a minute for some additional questions, but I'm going to stop recording at this point. Thank you.